Good day to everyone. Our focus is the graph of the different functions. Okay. So before we are going to show to you the graph of the different functions, may we just recall the different functions that we consider in the general map. So the very first function that we consider in the general map is we have the linear function. Okay. Another one is the quadratic function followed by the cubic function. We can also have a rational function. We have the exponential function. We have the logarithmic function. And some other function that is we have the absolute value function and we have the constant function. Now, our focus is to show it to you the different graph that uh, upon looking at that graph, you can immediately decipher what kind of functions they represent. So the very first thing that we are going to look into is we have the linear function. The linear function is represented by the function which is f of x is equal to mx plus b. So notice that when we have this one as function, uh, f of x is equal to mx plus b, notice the variable x, the variable x is in the first degree, okay? Meaning to say, if that is in the first degree, our equation or our function is considered to be a linear function, okay? It is considered to be a linear function. Now, what are the examples, okay? We might be saying we have f of x is equal to 3x, plus b. The value of m is always a numerical number. Now notice that our b or our f of x is equal to 3x plus, uh, plus 5. Okay? So we might have this one. This is considered to be a linear function. Now notice that the degree of this function is in the first degree. We can also consider this one as our example, f of x is equal to x minus 5. Notice that the degree of x in the first degree. So every time that we are going to consider a function that is in the first degree, that is considered to be a linear function. Now how is the graph, or what is the graph of the linear function? The graph of the linear function is always uh, have this position or, or nature. So if we have the, uh, the white one to be our Cartesian plane, that is our y-axis, this is our x-axis, notice that uh, the linear function is a diagonal, a diagonal line, okay? So diagonal line, diagonal line that uh, falls to the right and diagonal line that falls to the left. Now these are the side of the graph of the linear function, okay? These are the style of the graph of the linear function. Now you might be asking, can we not consider a vertical line, a vertical line to be a graph of the linear function? No, we cannot consider this one. The mere fact that all the points correspond to each other vertically and thus in our vertical line test, the values of x are always repeated in the different points of this one, in the different coordinates of the points that creates this line. So we need to say the values of x in, the, in every coordinates of this uh, line that create this line are all repeated. Thus, this is not considered to be a graph of the linear function. Okay. It is not considered to be a graph of the linear function. The next one that we are going to look into is the quadratic function. Okay? We have in here the quadratic function. Now in the quadratic function, it is always uh, uh, not working to uh, know the form of the quadratic function. The quadratic function is uh, shown by this expression that is the same as f of x is equal to ax raised to 2 plus bx plus plus c. Notice, a, b, c in here are all numerical coefficient, but your a can never have a value of 0 because 
if your a is considered to be zero, now this is not a quadratic function, but it is still a linear function, a okay? linear function. Why? If that is zero, multiplied by this x raised to two, it will always be a zero. And so what is left? bx plus c. bx plus c is similar to mx plus b. So, meaning to say, when we are talking of the quadratic function, when we are talking of the quadratic function, a, b, c are all real number, but the value of a should not have a value of zero. Okay? So that is the quadratic function. Now, another one, when we are talking of the quadratic function, the quadratic function is in the second degree. Meaning to say, the highest exponent of the quadratic function is 2. It is in the second degree. Every time that you can see an expression with a degree of 2, meaning to say, that is considered to be a quadratic. Now, what is our focus? Our focus is to see the graph of the quadratic function. The graph of the quadratic function is always a parabola. Its parabola number one is a parabola opens upward. My parabola number two is a parabola opens downward. So that is only the graph of the quadratic function. Meaning, meaning when we are going to uh, have the graph, we only have two. You might be asking, can we not consider a graph that opens to the uh, right, a parabola that opens to the right, a parabola that opens to the left. Can we not consider this one to be the graph of quadratic function? The answer is no. We can never consider this one to be a graph of the quadratic function. Why? Because it fails in the vertical line test. Okay? So in the vertical line test, may we recall the meaning of the vertical line test, if there are two points that is intersected by the vertical line test within that graph, that two points tells you that this graph is not a graph of function. Meaning to say, every time that there are, there are points points responding vertically, then that graph is not considered to be a function. Again, how is that? Why is it, it is not considered to be a graph of a function? Because the value of x in this coordinate and the value of is x in this coordinate are repeated. Again, when we define a function, the x must not be repeated or the domain must not be repeated. And so, that is the graph of the quadratic function. The graph of the quadratic function is a parabola opens to upward, a parabola opens downward. Okay? So, the next thing that we're going to look into is the graph of a cubic function. Now, how is the graph of the cubic function? Before we're going to see, explain this graph of the cubic function, we have to understand that the cubic function is in this form, okay, x raised to 3. The point in here is, every time that a function is in the third degree, that function is called to be a cubic function. Again, if that function is in the third degree, that is considered to be a cubic function, okay, that is considered to be a cubic function. Now, how is the example of this one? That one alone. Okay? Or we can also have we can also have f of x is equal to x raised to 3 plus 1. Or we can also have x raised to 3 minus 10. Okay? The point in here is every time that a given function is in the third degree, that is considered to be a cubic function. Now how is uh the graph of the cubic function. The graph of the cubic function is somewhat like a snake. Okay, it is like a snake. So you notice this one. So if this is a diagonal line, a diagonal line that is being twisted. Okay, and a line that is being twisted. And so that is the graph of the cubic function. It reminds me. It reminds me. In the uh, in the uh, quadratic uh, function. If 
the value of A, if the value of A is positive, okay, the value of A is positive, okay, the parabola we have in here must open upward. Again, if the value of A is positive, the parabola is uh, a parabola that opens upward. Now, if your A, A is negative, the parabola opens downward. I repeat, if the value of A, if the value of A is negative, the parabola opens downward. Now, what about if the uh, cubic function? What about the cubic function? If the numerical coefficient of the variable that is in the third degree is positive, again, if the numerical coefficient of the variable x that is in the third degree is positive, now the graph is always a graph that climbs, okay, goes to the goes up to the right, and if that is negative, the graph will goes down to the right. Okay, when it goes down to the right. And so that is, or this are the graph of the three functions we are considering. Linear function, quadratic function, cubic function. Our focus is to graph the different type of the functions. And uh, as I said, the uh, purpose of having this one is, again, for you to determine immediately by not computing, by just looking at the graph, you can immediately cipher or you can immediately say what kind or the name of the function. Okay, now, the very first thing in here is we have a constant function. Okay, what do we mean when we say constant function? When we say constant function, the graph is always a horizontal line. The graph will always be a horizontal line by uh, having this sample. Okay? So by having this one. So if I have in here my Cartesian plane, shall I say, I will say this one to be uh, y axis. Okay? And this must be my x axis. And I would like to graph the constant function the graph will always be this one, okay? So, the graph will always look like this one. Now, notice that uh, the graph can be what? Located below the x-axis or above the x-axis or the x-axis alone, okay? So, that is the graph. So, meaning, if I have in here the line 1, my line 1 is above the x-axis, my line 2 is below the x-axis. Now, or how do we state the constant function? When you notice, a constant function is represented by the sample. f of x is equal to, shall we say, 3. And 3. Meaning, Whatever value of x that you are going to uh, use, shall we say, if my x is 1, if my x is 1, if I were to evaluate this one, it will give you f of 1 is still 1, 3. Notice, if I will say my, my f of x is negative 3, now, I will evaluate this one. I will say f of negative 3. What would be the result? 3. So, that is the meaning. So, meaning to say, if I have uh, uh, these two points, my first point, okay, my first point, point 1, we have in here, if my x is 1, okay, the x is 1, what would be the result? 3. If the point is or the point 2 is negative 3, still the result is what? Positive? Positive 3. 
And so that, if we are going to look into this one, this point, if we are going to look into this one and we would like to calibrate, we will calibrate our partition plane. Shall we say this is, this is one, this is two, this is three. Now notice that if I have in here calibration, okay, if I have in here the calibration of my uh, x-axis, shall I have this, shall I say I have this one, okay, where is the three, one and three, where is that located? It is located, is located in here, okay. Now this one and three is located in here, one, one, two, three, so ayan. How about this one? Negative three. I have in here negative one, negative two, negative three. My x is negative three. What would be your y? That is the same as positive, positive three. Now, does it follow a line? Yes. Horizontal line. But the point in here is very clear. When we say a constant function, a constant function is considered to be a linear function. Why linear function? Because what is a line? Okay? The graph is a line. Okay? The graph is a line. Now, notice that if I were to have also this one, if I were to uh, uh, illustrate this one, I will say, uh, what about if I have in here number one function, number two function. My number two function will say f of x is equal to negative 3 or negative 3 what if I will say the x is equal to negative 2 what would be the result notice notice that if I have f of negative 2 the result will always be negative negative 3 so what is the point huh? our point 1 is what negative 2 and negative 3 where is that i will make that one where is negative 2 we have in here where is negative 3 0 1 2 3 so meaning it is located in here okay now again i will uh, i will state another x x would be uh, shall i say uh, positive 2 positive 2 what would be the result of f of 2? Still, the result is what? Negative 3. So what would be my point? What would be the point? The point is uh, 2 and negative 3. Where is that located? 2 on x. Okay? What, 0, 1, 2. What about the y? Negative 3. Where is that? It is located in here. See? So that is the meaning of, what again? Constant function. Okay? That's the meaning of the constant function. I hope you are following. Okay? Now, the next thing that we are going to look into is the absolute function, or shall we say, the absolute value function. Now, what about the uh, graph of this one? the graph is always v-shape opens upward I have in here the style so we can have this one as our as our graph it is always a v-shape it is always a v-shape that can move to the right that can move to the left okay so that is always the graph of the absolute function so I repeat V shape, V shape that is opens, opens upward. Okay, opens upward. Okay, opens upward. <coughs> now, how is the function represented when we say absolute value function? Every time that you have seen this one, f of x is symbolized by the body or by the symbol vertical line okay so meaning to say shall we say we have in here okay x 
plus 1. X plus 1 or X minus 1 or just X. So we need to say, those are the possible, possible style of the absolute value function. It is always, it is always a V-shape. Okay? And when we are talking of the absolute value function, it is the presence of the vertical to vertical line, enclosing the operation of the function itself. Okay? I hope you're following. Okay? Another one in here is we have what we will now in here the rational function. A rational function. Now when we say rational function, a rational function is always presented into a fractional form. Okay? Fractional form. How is that? Most probably, our rational function will be that is the same as f of x. Okay? f of x is equal to what? We have in here m of x over d of x. What do we mean by this? We have a numerator. Okay? We have a numerator and we have a denominator. <coughs> the numerator is a function. The denominator is a function. Okay? The denominator is a function. So notice that when we are going to have the rational function to identify immediately that the graph really represent a rational function. The style of the graph is we have in here, if follow this one, so if I have in here the Cartesian plane, I have my y-axis again, okay? I have my y-axis and I have in here the x-axis. Now, how is the graph of the rational function? The graph of the rational function can be this one, can uh, have this style, okay? and have this sign, okay? If we are saying basic rational function, the graph is always like this one, okay? So how is that? That is f of x is equal to 1 over x, 1 over x. So those are the style of the graph, the different graph of our functions, okay? The next thing that we are going to look into is the exponential function and the logarithmic function. Okay? <laughs> exponential function and logarithmic function. Now, again, our focus is to uh, at least uh, look into the style of the graph. Okay? So, when we say exponential function, let's try to just uh, go over how it is represented if that is a function. Exponential function is represented by having this one. Okay? So we might be having f of x is equal to b raised to x. Now, when we say exponential function, our exponent is what? x, the variable x. Definitely our b in here is always a number base. Okay. Now, uh, if we are going to look into that one, the very uh, simple example of this one is f of x f of x is equal to 2, 2 raised to x. Now mind you, mind you, an exponential function should not have a value of b that is 1 or negative 1. Not tayo, okay? So the value of b is any number but not, but not 1 or negative 1. Okay? Laro? Okay, next. Now, how is the graph? How is the graph of this one? The graph will always follow this style. Okay? The graph will always follow this one. Okay? It will always follow this style of the graph. So, if you see the graph, it, is seem, it seems that a half of a parabola half of the parabola that is considered as exponential function. Or uh, another one can also follow the other sign. 
Okay? But notice that when we have it here, or that is the simple style of our exponential function. Now, what about the logarithmic function? The logarithmic function, the logarithmic function can be uh, stated this way: log of log of x to the base b. Okay, as simple as that one. Basta if you see the uh, word log, if you see the word log, that is considered to be a logarithmic function. It is just the opposite of the exponential function, okay? It is just the opposite of the exponential function. So how is the graph? The graph is just the same, okay? So we can also have this style. 